Professor Dave and Chegg here. We just introduced the concept of colligative properties and examined how the vapor pressure of a solution is affected by the presence of solute particles. Let's see what other properties will change due to the presence of solute particles. Solute particles also interfere with the process of boiling, which also involves an equilibrium between the liquid and gas phase. Since the boiling point of a substance is defined as the point where its vapor pressure is equal to surrounding atmospheric pressure, if the presence of a solute lowers the vapor pressure of a solution, that means that the boiling point of the solution must increase when compared to pure solvent. This is because the solute particles interfere with the process of boiling, so a slightly higher temperature must be reached for this process to occur. The change in boiling point due to the presence of solute particles is called boiling point elevation, and this change can be calculated using the following equation. The change in boiling point will depend on the molality of the solution, since the more particles there are, the more they will interfere with the process of boiling. And there is also a constant called the boiling point elevation constant, which will depend on the identity of the solvent. Here are some KB values, including one for water, which will be commonly used. We can clearly see that as molality increases, the boiling point elevation will increase. For example, if we have a 0.33 molal solution of some solute in benzene, what will be its boiling point? Well, let's look at our table and get the KB value for benzene and plug that into our equation along with the molality. We should get 0.83 degrees as the boiling point elevation. Now, we must add this delta T value to the normal boiling point as the presence of solute will always cause the boiling point to increase. Let's get the normal boiling point of benzene, which is 80.1, and then tack on the value we calculated for the elevation. That should give us 80.9 as the boiling point for the solution. We should point out that when considering a soluble ionic solid as a solute, there is an additional factor that must be considered. Because each formula unit of an ionic solid will dissociate into some number of ions, we need to account for this number, as each individual ion will act as a solute particle. The greater the number of ions in the formula unit, the greater the resulting concentration of solute once dissociation occurs. For example, one molar in sodium chloride really means two molar in solute, since one formula unit produces two ions. But with calcium chloride, there are three ions that result upon dissociation, so one molar in the solid really means three molar in solute. This is accounted for by something called the Van't Hoff factor, represented by the letter I. Here are some common ionic solids and their corresponding Van't Hoff factors, which are quite trivial to arrive at by simply counting the number of ions in the formula unit. This can get quite large, such as with something like aluminum sulfate, with two aluminum ions and three sulfate ions for a total of five. This will be incorporated into the equation calculating the boiling point elevation, so delta T will equal the Van't Hoff factor times Kb times molality. This same concept can be extended to the freezing point of a liquid. In order for a liquid to freeze, the particles must form a lattice. So if solute particles are present and interfering with the formation of this lattice, the solution must then reach an even lower temperature in order to freeze. This phenomenon is called freezing point depression. Just like boiling point elevation, the freezing point depression will also depend on the molality of the solution, as well as a freezing point depression constant that is specific to the solvent. But unlike the boiling point elevation, which is always added to the normal boiling point, the freezing point depression will always be subtracted from the normal freezing point because the presence of solute will always lower the freezing point of a liquid. For example, let's say we took that 0.33 molal solution of benzene again. What would be the freezing point of this solution? Well, once again, we can get the constant from this table and plug that into the equation along with the molality. That will give us a freezing point depression of 1.7 degrees. As we said, this must be subtracted from the normal freezing point, so let's refer to the normal freezing point of benzene and subtract our calculated freezing point depression, and we will see that this solution should freeze at 3.8 degrees. Again, when considering ionic solids, we will need to utilize the Van't Hoff factor. 
This time, delta T equals negative I times KF times molality. This is because a greater and greater concentration of solute will depress the freezing point lower and lower. So if an ionic solid is specified as the solute and the formula unit is given, we must find the number of ions in the formula unit, which will be the Van't Hoff factor, and plug that into the equation to get the correct answer. We should now understand a few colligative properties, including vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, and freezing point depression. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.